Stick with me and I'll teach you how to build this extra long saw buck. It's not even that much money. Hi, welcome to Looptopia where we are making our own utopian homestead. Today we are going to build a saw buck, but a large saw buck. Usually you don't see them this long because I want to be able to hold larger uh, pieces of wood and work on them without killing my back. So I'm going to walk you through. You've probably seen models like this on the internet, but not quite this design. This is going to be a little sturdier and a little longer so you can work on bigger logs and save that spine because I still care about your spine. So one of the very first things I realized we need at the homestead was a saw bug because cutting wood on the ground is just rough on your back and we need to take care of our health at this age, protect it, and it's just it's better ergonomics. To make this exact model, you're going to need eight two by four by eights. You're going to need 16 or more of exterior screws that are over, I'd say probably three inch screws or you can get away with two and a half if you want. Carriage bolts, you're going to need four of these that are four inches with washers and nuts. And that's it. If you're new to construction, you'll find out that a two by four by eight is not actually eight feet long. If you look at this, it's eight foot ends right here. It's actually 93 inches. So we divide that in half so we can get a nice even cut and that'll put you at 46 and a half. So make a mark at 46 and a half. You want to do this for four of your boards. So here's a time saving hack so you don't have to actually measure each board. What you do is you stack them all together like this, make sure they're exactly flush. And then you mark the top board. And as you cut, you put your saw a little longer than two inches deep and it'll mark the board under it. This will save you from having to mark a bunch of boards over and over and measure. Here you can see what I'm talking about. The first one is cut completely through, but the second one already has a start and that'll save me a bunch of time so I don't have to mark every board. And it really helps when you're doing a lot of construction and you need you know, 50 boards cut like this. Now what you're going to want to do is kind of like find the good end because we're going to use this these uh, store-bought ends as the bottom in case your cuts came a little crooked on the top and you want to go about two-thirds down the board so this is a little over 46 inches we're looking at I'm gonna put it about a little over 30 so 30 and a third and you're gonna measure it from the good end up so just go up if you want to make your life easy just go to 30 but we're gonna basically do two-thirds of the board um, is where you want to start drilling the holes. Okay, so we're ready to go to drill and you need to mark it really exact. So you measure it from the inside in to put in the center and I'm doing it about 30 up. So which will give me about two-thirds of the board and one-third of the board. So aim for those holes. I'm using a 5 16th bit to drill it. All right, so we got our holes drilled. Uh, you'll put use a washer on each end and that you basically just stack these together and and put them through and i'll show you what that looks like in a sec so you'll put this in just pretty much hand tighten it you can take it down hard but if you go too tight you won't be able to use a scissor effect an idea is that you can close this if you want to take up less room so you know don't go too tight on it or you won't be able to do that Let's see these come together do this uh three more times so you should have four all together so don't forget, you want to put washers on both sides and then you just push them through. That's it. So the easiest way to start to get measurements of where to put the support boards is I just use a speed square and make this at a right angle. And this way when it opens, it'll actually be at a right angle on that board right there. So we'll mark where that is. To make this consistent, line up all the bottoms together, come up, and once you've figured out where to mark it on one side, you measure it, you know, I showed you earlier how to use the right angle to mark it on one side. What you'll do is you just line the rest up and mark them. And that'll save you a bunch of work and it'll make sure the pattern repeats. You'll do this all on one side, like I'm doing everything to the left, and then I'll flip it over and I'll do everything uh, opposite. So you're gonna lay out this board and it is 93 inches. And to get everything centered, it's gonna be a little weird, but you're gonna divide by three. You'd think it's four pieces, but you don't really count the end which puts you at 31 inches for each segment. So just lay them up, lay it out, 
remember which board you're attaching to and put in two to three screws on each board flip it over and then do the opposite this is a beginner tip for some people that are new to carpentry you never want to put your screws or nails in completely straight down even though it'll look kind of a little wonky I mean unless you're doing like finishery work or something but you want to put them about 10 to 15 degrees tilted and they're exponentially stronger so put them in a little crooked it'll look like everything I do is a little crooked another way you can add the second board is to set the first one up lock it completely out and then make sure everything's touching and screw it in and I think this is a better way to do it it just takes two people so this is the final product you can handle a pretty big log with this by putting extra braces in like we did it's much bigger than the saw bucks I usually see and if you really wanted to put a hack on it you can use straps and either a bungee or a ratchet if you really want to hold it tight and you can hold the end of a log while you're cutting another end so you can hang a pretty long log off here and work and this is what it'll look like if you want to lay it down and store it obviously you should probably waterproof it if you're gonna keep it out but we're gonna keep it under a tent most likely but if you were to do that, just use marine proof polyurethane or something. Or burn it. And here's the finished product. And this is about a, I think about 12 to 13 foot log. And it gets in there and lets you skin it easier. And obviously you can handle much, much bigger logs than this. If you're new to our channel, welcome to Looptopia. We are building our own utopian homestead. Also, if you want to see our uncensored videos that aren't allowed on YouTube, you can see all those for free over at Odyssey. Just look at the description below for the link.